lot of people out riding today. <laughs> Sidecar. That's awesome. I'm surprised you don't have a little doggo in there. I'll do it. <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> All right. What's up, guys? Welcome to a new video. So, as you can see, a lot of people are out riding right now. The weather's getting really nice in Florida. Winter is like our ideal time to ride down here. And uh, I wanted to do a video on why we ride alone a lot of the times. And I would say. I'm with Heather 99% of the time I'm riding. I'm with Heather and my dad probably 90% of the time that I'm riding. Other than that, I really don't ride with many other people. Um, you know, there are friends of mine that I trust riding with, but I'll tell you what, I think it's, I, I think it's mostly to do with the scene in Florida. And the scene in Florida is a little bit rough. Okay, so most of the time I'm riding with Heather or Heather and my dad. And uh, a lot of that has to do with the scene in Florida. There's so many riders that come down here or just like locals in general and they ride with like no gear. They have no group riding etiquette. They, they've ridden in groups, but in groups of people that don't know what they're doing. And I'm not saying I'm an expert, but I'm pretty good at keeping my, my crew or my group safe. Um, even though there are times that you might think that I'm riding a little bit reckless. Um, my number one goal when I go out is to bring everybody I brought out home safely. And I think that should be everyone's goal when riding in a group, but a lot of times it's not. Heather's leaving me right now. This is what happens when I'm vlogging. She is quick, I'll give her that. So, like I said, most of the time I'm riding either with Heather or my dad, or sometimes I even ride by myself. That's pretty rare though. Um, but the main reason is I just don't trust people. Like, it's hard for me to trust somebody riding behind me. I would rather somebody that I don't really know to ride in front of me, but then the thing becomes that they want to show off. Like, I've had a lot of people come out riding with me that are, you know, uh, they're locals or whatever, but they haven't ridden these roads out here, and they, you know, they subscribe to me on YouTube, and they're like, oh, this guy does wheelies and this and that and yada yada. Oh, he's gonna, I'm gonna go out and impress him. And that is absolutely not what I want anyone to be doing when they ride with me. I want people to ride within their own limits, uh, their own skill, their own, uh, you know, just stay within your own means of your limitations and not try to impress me or the other people that are around me. I don't care how fast you can go. I don't care how long you can wheelie. I don't care that you can pop a first gear wheelie on your 1000cc sport bike. You know, it's not that impressive. And I hate saying that because it sounds like I'm being a, a dick, but it's not. It's like, my main goal is to bring everyone home safe. When people start acting, just acting like wild and dangerous and putting the group at risk, that's when I, nine times out of 10, will probably never ride with that person again. A lot of times I might have to have a heart to heart with them, which I kind of hate doing because I sound like such a dad. I'm like, you know, hey, sorry, you know, you rode like a total douche today and sorry, nobody in the group wants to ride with you again. And I will say 99.9% .9 of the time, my dad and Heather are right on the money with me. But my thoughts, I can kind of tell because we all kind of ride around each other so much that we know each other's skill level, we know each other's, we can expect what each other are gonna do, right? So when I'm riding with Heather, I know her abilities, I know her um, skill level, and I know what to expect from her, if I didn't already say that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so when I'm riding with other people, it's hard for me to predict what they're gonna do and what they're capable of. Um, just because they're keeping up with us in the corners 
or roads that they haven't ridden before doesn't mean that they're comfortable they could be back there like on the the edge of their seat like just trembling in fear um trying to keep up and i'm not saying that we ride super fast or anything it's just that like we know the roads we ride on we know how fast we can take the corners and most of the time we're taking them a lot slower than we than we actually could just because you know you never want to ride at 100 percent so a lot of times we will have people come out and a few things that get on my nerves are riders that come out with us they don't know where we're going and they'll pass like whoever's leading the group say it's me they will literally pass me in a straightaway to show me that their 1000 can do 130 like i haven't seen it a million times before that is not going to impress me whatsoever and all it will make me do is dislike you for being stupid because now you know you don't know where you're going but you're out in front so little unbeknownst to you a quarter mile up the road i'm turning left with the whole entire group now i have to slow down the entire group because you passed the leader and you don't know where you're going and why did you pass because you want to show off because you just like you can't hold back i don't know i don't get it i've had people so many people do this and it irritates me beyond belief you wouldn't believe dude um so that's that's an easy way to get on my nerves the other way is to do wheelies behind people like i'll have people literally be like behind me like this and be like and then they'll end up like this where they're coming up right on my tail and scaring the crap out of me because i think i'm gonna run into the back of me like i don't care if you can wheelie okay i mean wheelies are cool but there's a time and a place for everything and when we're going down a road that you don't know you don't know where we're going to turn what happens if you rip a wheelie right here in the left lane and then all of a sudden heather's leading the group and she's about to turn left what if she turns into you i mean there's just so many things that can happen and group rides are absolutely the most dangerous rides to be on if you don't know the people around you um perfect example about I don't know three four months ago we were riding back on the same exact road and i was leading the group i knew where i was going i knew how fast i could take the corners and i knew what was coming up but something happened out of nowhere right we come around the corner a freaking tree like a tree tree like this big around had fallen right in the road right i'm the leader of the group thankfully i think it was heather was was directly behind me and then my dad and then the rest of the group but uh, thankfully I was able to, you know, emergency break. I'd say it was probably a good, like, I don't know. I'll back off from Heather. By the time I saw the tree, it was about from me to Heather and I was going about probably 45, 50. So I had enough time to emergency break for myself. But all I was hoping is that the people behind me were paying attention to what I'm doing paying attention to my brake lights paying attention to my my hand signals and everything because immediately i downshift into like second maybe first gear i'm not sure what gear i was in but i downshift into that gear i grab a little bit of brake and start squeezing on the front brake and then i'm easing on the rear brake and i have plenty of time to emergency brake and as i'm doing that i move over so like i move over to like right here so the people behind me have more than enough room to break before they hit that tree um you know hopefully not hit that tree but so the people behind me have enough um room also so me moving out of their way gives them an extra you know six seven feet of room to break right so you have to think fast you know on a motorcycle to begin with but when you're riding in a group you have to think even faster because you got to think whatever obstacle you're coming up on the people behind you are about to come up on the same exact obstacle whether it's gravel in the road whether it's a tree down whether it's an animal you have to account for the people behind you when you're riding by yourself you don't have to do that um, you basically are only accounting for yourself and your own safety so this is why most of the time i would say 90 plus percent of the time we ride alone and honestly it's the safest way for us to ride and enjoy it and we can ride at our own pace we don't have to be slowed down or feel like we're we're being pressed to to keep up or anything like that we can just kind of do our own thing
so um, but there are the exceptions okay so like Heather says we were just talking about this when we were at the stop and uh, at the gas station back there and we were talking about you know riding in a group and how dangerous can be can be and the, how much we enjoy just riding with me her and my dad most of the time um, and we all know each other's skill level and that's the thing and once you ride with people for so long you realize everything that they're capable of um, and their riding abilities and where their comfort zone is and where they're pushing themselves right so she says that it she thinks it has a lot to do with where we live which i completely agree because when we were in the mountains uh we rode with quite a few people that were you know skilled riders but we stay most of the time we would stay behind them at first and kind of learn how they ride and i'll tell you what like we rode with sarah merrill we rode with r3 amputee uh, we rode with Sean, we uh, rode with uh, Luke, um, we rode with Chris and Heather, um, so many people we rode with and I can't tell you guys how comfortable it was to ride with people who actually know what they're doing, who actually have good riding etiquette and good group riding etiquette and uh it was just it was really a good feeling and i feel like if we lived in the mountains we would probably find people that were like-minded and um you know just people that were like on the same page as us as far as riding uh wearing gear you know looking out for each other um not showing off all the time you know everybody shows off a little bit but not showing off all the time um you know, and years ago when I first learned how to wheelie, I used to wheelie almost every straightaway I possibly found. Now that I've, you know, I wouldn't say anywhere near mastered wheelies, but I am very, very comfortable with doing wheelies. I feel like now, I hardly ever do wheelies. I might do one or two wheelies, like, uh, per ride. And sometimes I won't even wheelie at all. It's, it's funny how it works. The better you got at it, the better I got at it, the less I actually did it. So uh, I wanted to make a video on that because people often ask me like um, about group riding and um, why we don't ride with more people because there are a lot of riders in Florida and unfortunately there are a lot of dangerous riders in Florida. So I'm going to leave you guys on that note. Thank you for watching. Leave your comments down below what your thoughts are on riding in a group or riding alone. And uh, I'll see you in the next video, alright? Peace and ride safe.